Well, welcome back. Our topic today is related rates, and I've titled it Related Rates 1 since we're going to spend a few days talking about related rates. So go ahead and write these sentences down, and we'll fill in the blank here together. So first and foremost, in a related rates problem, you are picking an equation that includes all variables. Second, only numerical substitutions allowed is for constants. And really stress that. And you've got to catch it. If you have one in the beginning that's a constant, something that's never going to change, um, you're allowed to substitute in first. And let me give you a quick example. Now, it's certainly not in every triangle problem, but, for example, if you had a ladder, is the size of this ladder going to change as it slides up and down the wall? Well, certainly not. If you have a six-foot ladder that's leaning against a wall, no matter if it slides up or down, it's always going to remain six feet long. So that would be a substitution that could get plugged in for a constant. And absolutely no numerical substitutions for variables until after you have derived. And lastly, every time we derive, we're doing so with respect to t, which obviously stands for time. All right, so example one. A rocket rising vertically is tracked by a radar station that is on the ground five miles from the launch pad. How fast is the rocket rising when it is four miles high and its distance from the radar station is increasing at a rate of 2,000 miles per hour? Well, first and foremost, you're probably gonna have to read that to yourself again, and you definitely need to draw a sketch, okay? We shouldn't be setting up any related rates problem without a sketch. So again, it says a rocket is rising vertically So I'll try to, there's my rocket shooting off vertically. Is tracked by a radar station that is five miles from the launch pad. So I'm just going to label this launch pad. And it said, um, I'm five miles on the ground is this radar station. So our question is, here it is, how fast is the rocket rising? So I'm going to say I'm looking for dr dt, r for rocket I guess. How fast is the rocket rising? You can think of that as them asking you the velocity. Um, at what rate is it rising? Specifically, okay, when it's four miles high. So when I'm going to say that rocket equals four. And I'm going to put an R here to represent that height of the rocket. Now, now it also says that the, how fast is the rocket rising when it's 4 miles high and the distance from the radar station is increasing at a rate of 2,000 miles per hour. So that rocket's distance from the radar station is increasing at a rate of 2,000 miles per hour. So I'm just going to call this side Z, I guess. And I'm not given z because, again, it's a rate. It says something per something. So that's actually d, z dt. Now, I know it's a positive value because of the word increasing. So it's a positive 2,000 miles per hour. Now, I just want to verify that I actually have a constant in this problem. Think about what we have here. We have a rocket that's rising. Is anything constant about a rocket going up in the air? Hopefully not. But I have this launch pad and the radar station. No matter how high this rocket goes in the air, the distance between the launch pad and the radar station is always going to be five miles. So let's take very good note here that we understand that this is a constant. And if you look back to what we said before, the only time you can plug a constant in, I'm sorry, plug a number in before is if it's guaranteed to be a constant. So because I have a nice simple triangle, I'm going to start myself with Pythagorean theorem. Um, so normally I would say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm just going to apply the letters I used in this problem. So r squared plus, now remember this is constant, so I can plug that in, equals z squared. 
All right, so my goal is to use implicit differentiation and take the derivative of this formula I have with respect to time. Okay? Now, because r does not have a t in it, when I take the derivative of r squared, I'm going to get 2r and then dr dt. 5 squared is a constant, so its derivative is 0, equals 2z dz dt. And again, I need dz dt because z does not have a t in it. Now that I've derived, it's fair game to plug in any number I have. Let's recall, my question is to find dr dt, so I basically, that's the only variable I shouldn't know, specifically when the radius is 4. Or I'm sorry, not the radius, the height of the rocket. So 2 times 4 times dr dt equals 2 times, shoot, I don't know z at the moment, so I'm going to leave it blank, but I do know z d, z d, d z dt was 2,000. Now, you might be saying, well, how are you going to get z? Well, again, it's a simple triangle, so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. I know my one side is always 5, so 5 squared, plus I specifically want the z value when this rocket is a, at a height of 4 equals z squared. I've got 25 plus 16 equals z squared. z equals the square root of 41. And I can substitute that into my equation here. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. Instead of me multiplying, these twos on each side are just going to cancel. And dr dt is equal to the square root of 41. I'm just dividing both sides by 4, which gives me times 500. And let's just make sure we take note of our units. You found a rate with respect to time. So we should have the number of miles, I believe the time was hour, miles per hour. And there you go. So I've got a couple more to try. Um, if I went too fast for you at any point, pause it, rewind it, and try it again. Example two. The height of a triangle is decreasing at a rate of one centimeter per minute while the area is increasing at a rate of 2 centimeters squared per minute. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the height is 10 centimeters and the area is 100 centimeters squared? Whew, there's a lot of information here, so we're just going to slowly break it down, dissect it, and draw ourselves a picture. Now notice it says the height of a triangle, but it doesn't say you have a right triangle, so don't assume it's right. Let's just go ahead and draw a nice triangle. And it says the height of the triangle, and I'm going to draw my height in. Remember from your good old geometry days that height is perpendicular to the base. We can label that h. It says the height of a triangle is decreasing at a rate. There's our four-letter keyword. They're not telling me the height. They're telling me the rate of the height. So I know dh dt is equal to, did you catch whether it's positive or negative? That word decreasing should tell you that it's decreasing at a rate of negative 1 centimeters per minute. While the area, so now we're talking area of a triangle, is increasing. Okay, so I've got my dA dt at a rate, there's my dA dt, of 2 centimeters squared per minute. And here's our actual question. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing? So now we're asking for d b d t. Okay, it says rate, so that's my something with respect to time of the base. Specifically, so that's what I'm looking for, specifically when the height equals 10 and the area equals 100. So my goal is to find an equation that relates area to base to height. And clearly that would be the area of a triangle. So area equals 1 half base times height. Now remember, you can't plug anything in. I can't just say my height is 10, okay, unless it's a constant. Did they tell us anything's constant? Is anything going to remain the same in here? Well, if this area is changing, certainly the height and the base are changing at the same time as well. So no, nothing's changing. We have no constants. And let's just make a note. We want to take the derivative with respect to time. So if you don't see the letter t in the variable, you have to add a d variable dt. So the derivative of a, of course, is 1, but because there's no t in there, I'm going to say that's d a dt. On the right side here, 
If I read it out loud, it says base times height, which is telling me I have to go product rule. I like to pull that one half out, that's just personal preference, and I'm going to do the product rule on the two variables, B and H. So I'm going to say B times DH DT plus H times DB DT. And again, I need those whatever DTs because those variables, B and H, don't have the letter T. I'm going to clean it up a little further and say DA DT is equal to one half B DH DT plus one half H DB DT. So now that I've derived the function, it's fair game to plug everybody I know in. So we know DA DT is two, one half. Um, remember, I, the only thing I shouldn't know is DB DT. Uh, it doesn't look like I know B at the moment, so I'll have to find it. Um, DH DT is negative one plus one half. They specifically want this when the height is 10. And dB dt, again, is the only thing I should be looking for. So if I don't have the base, I can easily go get the base. We haven't used the fact that we know the area. So to find me, I'm just going to plug the 10 and the 100 into the area formula of that triangle. Area equals 1 half base times height. I know the area is 100. Uh, finding the base when the height is 10. Uh, half of 10 is 5. 5 divided by 100 gets me a base of 20. So now I can take that B value I found and substitute it in here. As I continue to solve, um, I've got 2 equals half of 20 is 10 times the negative gets me negative 10 plus 5 dB dt. So to solve for this dB dt, I'm going to add my 10 over. So I've got 12 equals 5 dB dt, and then of course divide by the 5. So I've got 12 over 5 equals dB dt. And I just want to take special note of the units. Remember, you have a rate, so I need to be saying centimeters per minute, I believe we're in, centimeters per minute. All right, I've got one last one for you. So this will be our last example for tonight, and it's usually the toughest one. Um, this problem is going to deal with the rate of change of an angle. So example three. A camera on the ground, 300 meters away from the launch pad, records a hot air balloon rising at a rate of 10 meters per second. How fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing when the hot air balloon is 40 meters high? So just like normal, let's go ahead and sketch out a picture. Uh, cameras on the ground. Okay, so I've got... I guess that's my camera, as best I can here. A camera on the ground, 300 meters from the launch pad. And then it says, the hot air balloon is rising, okay, so clearly it's rising from my launch pad. I'm going to work on these drawings. At a rate of 10 meters per second. So I'm just going to use H because I'm talking about the height of this hot air balloon. And they tell me this is the rate at 10 meters per second, so dH dt is equal to, and is it positive or negative? Um, rising should indicate that we have a positive 10. How fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing? Okay, so here's my angle. And it does say how fast, so I'm looking for d theta dt, and the rate that it's changing. Specifically when the height, the hot air balloon's height, is 400 meters high. Okay, so just identifying all those pieces takes a few moments. Now, remember, my goal is to pick an equation that relates all three pieces I have together. So I need an equation that represents an angle, oopsie, um, an angle, um, this side of the triangle, and this side of the triangle. And the only thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about an angle is a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent. So I just have to determine which one would be the best one for me to use. Now, if this is my theta, I think it's obvious that at the moment I don't know anything about the hypotenuse, so I'm actually going to try to avoid that. I do know the adjacent side is a constant, and I know the opposite side has a rate of 10 and it's labeled h. So I'm going to go with tangent. So I'm just going to start off by saying the tangent of theta, just that general formula you talked about in ninth grade, 
is opposite over adjacent. Okay, and then I'm going to ask myself, can I plug anything in? Is there something that's a constant, something that's never going to change? Well, clearly, if this hot air balloon's rising, the height's going to change, and that means this distance would change. But the camera and the launch pad are never going to change. So let's make sure we label that a constant. Okay, and it's so important that you catch that because that means you can plug that in immediately. So I'm going to say the tangent of theta is actually equal to the opposite side, which you'll notice I called h, over 300. Now, there's one other personal preference I like to do, and I just like to get that variable by itself. I don't like dealing with fractions. I'm not sure if anybody does. So I'm going to just multiply both sides by 300. So I don't have a fraction, and I've got h by itself. So I'm going to say the height is equal to 300 tan theta. And this is who I'm going to derive. And again, with respect to time. So if my variable doesn't have a t in it, it needs to get a d whatever dt. So the derivative of h, of course, is 1, but I'm going to say dh dt. 300 is just a coefficient, so I'm going to leave my 300. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of theta. But now don't forget you need d theta dt. It's really the secant, I'm sorry, the tangent of theta. So I do have chain rule there. All right, so let's just make a note. We have chain going on, my outside and my inside. And don't forget, you asked to solve for d theta dt, so that better be in the problem someplace. So of course, now that I've derived, I'm just going to substitute anybody and anything I know in. Um, I believe we knew d h dt, um, yep, was 10. And remember, I'm finding d theta dt. Oops. Um, so I know this is 10 equals 300. Not 100% sold on what secant squared is at the moment. Um, and d theta dt is what I'm looking for. So how do we get the secant squared? Well, let's go back and look at our triangle. And I'm just going to redraw it down here real quickly. Um, they wanted the height specifically, or they wanted this angle specifically when the height was 400. So I'm going to need to go get this side, and I think we can do some real quick mental math here. 300 squared plus 400 squared, hopefully that reminds you of a 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to say this is 500. And if you didn't follow that, just a quick Pythagorean theorem. So again, the question is, what is secant theta? So think back to your little trig values. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. And my theta was here. So I would say my secant is the hypotenuse, which is 500 over the adjacent 300. And don't forget, it's secant squared, so I'm going to slap a squared on there. Now, before I do any mental math, I'm going to kill these zeros. So I basically have 10 equals 300 times 25 over 9, d theta dt. And again, I like to simplify these. Um, 3 goes into 300 100 times and into 9 3 times. So that gets me 2,500 over 3, d theta dt. And I'm simply just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to go 3 over 2,500 onto both sides. That kills that. So I've got, getting a little sloppy, sorry, 30 over 2,500 equals d theta dt. And I certainly can kill a zero there. And... And we're left with our 3 over 250 d theta dt. And lastly, I just want to watch my units. Take note that we found theta, which is measured in radians. And I believe we were per second. Okay, so my answer should be radians per second. Well, there you have it. Our main focus today was related rates with a triangle. And uh, we look forward to some practice in class. Have a great night.